Now, as uh, I said earlier, I'm going to move to the problem B. As I assume that you are watching all the video editorials in the order I gave in the opening remarks video. Since even though uh, you may guys find this problem too easy or the other problems, I would like you guys to watch uh, the, all the video editorials for some remarks and other stuff like that. So I'm beginning with B now. In this problem, we have a square binary matrix and uh, we need to actually block uh, at most two squares such that uh, we can't get from the starting point to the finish point no matter which digit we are choosing. Like, as you know, we can choose a digit, either 0 or 1, and walk only on the squares which have that digit. But uh, we have to block all the possibilities. Now, uh, there can be some heuristic approaches, namely blocking some random squares or uh, doing other uh, similar algorithms. But uh, in our tests, we have ensured that uh, all of the heuristic algorithms are going to fail. If you didn't fail, then I would like you to submit the code, so maybe it will get up hacked so that we don't get any heuristics passing. But I'm going to obviously explain the uh, correct solution, which works every time. Let's say we have a matrix. So it is a square matrix. And here are the starting and the finish points. Now, I'm going to prove that uh, you only need to blo block at most two squares in order to solve this problem, because this is quite important since uh, we can't actually do it with uh, more reversals. We are asking the problem to reverse with at most two cells. And in order to do it, I'm going to use the corners of the matrix, namely the upper left corner and the lower right corner. Why would I use these corners? The reason is quite simple. That uh, each of these corners has two squares next to the starting or the finish point. And uh, we can be sure that uh, no matter which configuration we have at the beginning, we can actually change the values to at most two squares such that on one corner we can get something like this, 1, 1, and on the other we can get 0, 0. In order to prove it, uh, you can actually see for every single configuration that we can actually do it in two modes. Like if we have at least uh, one corner already covered in 0, 0 or 1, 1, it's trivial. You just cover the other corner with the different digit. Otherwise, if you have 1, 0 and 0, 1, just change one uh, square from each corner. So you get two changes. And uh, this is actually the solution of the problem. You can just cover the corners and uh, ensure that on one corner you have one one and on the other you have zero zero. The reason why this works is because uh, you want the starting and the finish point to be encircled by uh, squares having different digits, so that no matter which digit you are choosing, and no matter how many squares from here you can actually get to, you can't get to the end. And this is what actually matters in the end. Like, even though you can actually walk through all of the squares of the matrix, let's say we have here like many zeros, and so on. It doesn't matter. You can reach this point because you covered it in a different color or digit, as is, is the case for this problem. This problem was actually quite interesting to prepare. Like, uh, I was the one who actually uh, spent most of the time preparing the stuff like uh, the test, the checker, and so on. But obviously, my friends helped me too. Like, we didn't do 
mending alone, like we cooperated for every problem. And uh, at the beginning, I wanted to give an up to 1000 since we like have a constant solution except for the input. But then since it's an early problem, uh, Anton told us that we should actually make it more Python friendly because Python is lower and we don't want people to get time limit exceeded because of reading input. So we reduced it to 100, but then after we had uh, reduced it to 100, the testers told us that uh, some of the slower solutions can actually work if implemented properly. Like uh, doing a BFS for each configuration and checking some conditions. So we decided to move to something in the middle, like 200. And that's what we actually did. Also in the test, other than having the random test cases, we added, as I said in the beginning of the video, tests which uh, work well against the various heuristics. And uh, that's what we try to do, actually, to not have any heuristics passing. I hope you also enjoyed watching this editorial, and I invite you guys to go to watch the editorial for C.